the far left tried to blame the summer riots on Starmer in a bid to hijack the Labour conference. I'm going to read into this piece from The Independent, you guys. Let's go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Regan Elite here with an article from The Independent with the headline that the far left are trying to blame the summer riots on Starmer in a bid to hijack the Labour conference. A far left activist, Mishka Ramgan, said the far right riots were, which rocked England and Northern Ireland in August were inevitable under this climate. Guys, while you're here, make sure you hit the like button and share it across social media so others are notified of this video. So I've read, I've read a bit, I've read most of this piece before we go into it, read into it again, because I wanted to kind of, I want to be very careful what I say here with regards to this, because I, I will, will definitely ruffle some feathers if I'm not careful with my words carefully here. Um, how can I put this? Now, I'm not a Labour supporter, never have been, um, and you guys know that, um, I praise Labour when I think they've done good policies or make said good things. Um, even even some of the things that Reform have had in their contract or their manifesto in the route to the general election, I thought there were some nice things in there. Same with the Conservatives, even though the majority of, of both of them, I thought they were crap. I'm more of a Green, uh, green uh, supporter than anything, but I'm not a Green member, but I'm definitely a fan of, of the, green, the Green political party. However, I'm also critical of the Greens when stories come up around them as well. Um, I've been very vocal, very angry with, with Labour, especially with the winter fuel payment. And I'm holding my breath on the, the two-child benefit cap and hoping that something will come at the budget. But I could very much be wrong on that. But to try to blame the... Now, uh, to try and blame in some way, shape or form that the riots are on Keir Starmer here, it's just stupid. It's just stupid. You cannot put this on Keir Starmer and the Labour government. Um, you you just can't. Yeah. Um, it, the Labour Labour are not responsible for for these UK riots. They're responsible for dealing with it. They're responsible for responding to it. Absolutely, because they're in power. But to say that the, these riots happen because of Keir Starmer and the Labour Party is absolute nonsense. Um, this has been done by the previous conservative government's austerity the way they handled covid the way they they're being taken out of the eu uh how we are the austerity that we have gone under um the language and tone that has been used by certain conservative politicians as well as reform politicians have led people into believing the things that they sh don't shouldn't be believing um all these kinds of all these and certain influencers right-wing far-right extreme uh, influencers who have manipulated and misled people into believing the narrative that is not true all these things play into it and of course the 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 elephant in the room on all this is immigration which is one of the things that people say is the biggest problem in 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 the country which it isn't um some people have even been daft enough to actually think that immigration is the reason why we have more sewage in our waters um, yeah, you try to explain that one to me because uh, you're an idiot if, if that's what you generally think you really really are an idiot um, so to say <laughs> to say that all our problems are on Starmer it's all his fault, it's just nonsense it's nonsense his party's only been in power for three months and you're and you're literally blaming everything on, on him where were these same people who were kicking and screaming about the Conservatives Huh? Like I've said, I've always said that I would give this part, this um, party, a chance to showcase themselves, to show what they can do, and I'm prepared to do that, even though that I have various, various criticisms of them. But this headline and this guy is, for me, is just no. You, you just, you're just not paying attention, bruv. You're just not paying attention. Yeah, I under, I'm totally all for people on left or, or right or whoever are in Labour and outside Labour to apply all the pressures that they can to try and change the direction of this party I'm all for that but to try and incentivize in any way shape or form that the riots that occurred are the fault of Sir Keir Starmer and Labour Party is just BS it's just full 
fully 100% BS. So Jeremy Corbyn's allies have tried to use the far right right over the summer as a weapon to attack Keir Starmer's fledging premiership. An event which appears to be aiming at hijacking the conference narrative, Starmer was accused of having embraced anti-migrant rhetoric by the former partner of the National Executive Committee, the NEC. Speaking at an uh, event on the fringes of the Labour conference in Liverpool on Sunday, Ms. Misha Rankin, a far-left member and critic of the Prime Minister, claimed that the government has thrown its own fuel into the Islamophobia and racism in the UK, adding that the far-right riots, which rocked England and Northern Ireland in August, were inevitable under this climate. Like, I... OK, some of the language, without a shadow of a doubt, by the Labour government has been too strong. I agree. 100% agree with that. I'm not dismissing that in any way, shape or form. And please, feel free to... to uh, please, feel free to add more down in the comments below. You're absolutely right. Some of the rhetoric from some of these, these Labour politicians have been, uh, have, have been extreme. But have they been as extreme as the Conservatives? No. Have they been going too close to that line? Yes. Should they be looking at... Should they be less... less you be use less aggressive language when it comes to immigration and migration. Yes, because it plays into it plays into the narrative, and what you shouldn't be doing is playing into the narrative. So I totally understand that, but I, I still can't. I still don't accept this premise that it is because of Labour. And at the same event, veteran MP Diane Abbott, a close ally of Corbyn, who Starmer attempted to block running as a Labour candidate in the election. Warned that a renewed austerity drive would bring an increase in racism with ethnic minorities bearing the brunt of this government's attacks. Yes, if if it is indeed austerity that we are if that that is coming, absolutely they deserve to be. Um, if it is austerity coming uh, from from Labour at this um, budget ne in next month, then absolutely they deserve a right kicking. Miss Rangim, who was a member of the NEC from 2020-2024, took aim at Sakir for meeting with right-wing Italian Prime Minister Giorgio Mendy, uh, Giorgio Mendy earlier this month. Now, I, I, I'm going to I'm going to defend this decision um, because uh, on a number of reasons. Now, one of the arguments that one of the arguments that people made, and it's a fair argument, is that Keir Starmer doesn't have a plan to deal with migration. Um, that's entirely possible. Um, I think that's fair to say that he doesn't have a clear plan on how to deal with it. Well, we know what the clear plan is. The clear plan is to save up safe legal routes for people to be able to come, and that will stop the boats and it will stop the gangs. Because then, you know, with clear with clear legal routes for people to come and come to the UK, then it means that these people don't need to cross over by boats illegally or get into trucks and whatnot as well. That's that's one that's one of the safe and legal legal ways to do so. But he won't do that, which is stupid. So, what? Why? Why? Why is it? Why is it stupid for him to go and uh, meet the uh, meet the right wing Italian Prime Minister Giorgio Mendy and visit Italy's um, Italy's um, immigration law? Because there may be some things that off that that they can use to perhaps help help deal with with uh, with immigration here. I'm not saying we should be taking all their ideas. Absolutely not. And you can't completely take their ideas because they had to have a difference. They threw a lot of money. You have to also remember that Italy's uh, Geography is different, uh, different in comparison to ours. Anyway, it's definitely just taking some ideas and see what they've done and what they can use in, in similarly. The difference is if is that um, they threw a lot of money at the Africa, North African countries such as Tunisia, Egypt, uh, and the North, and basically paid them to basically pick up any boats trying to cross in the from the Mediterranean out and bring them back to their country bring them back to their countries basically is what they're trying to do um but also those countries are being extremely ruthless when it comes to migrants as well the, the they are literally killing them um not uh, literally killing them with some of the actions that they are doing in those countries as well but the italians are happily throwing money at that problem which is not a very nice thing the other thing they're also doing is um throwing money at albania to set up uh, to process their uh, to process anyone who wants to claim asylum where in italy they can get processed in albania I should stress as well that the UK cannot set up a processing center of any sorts in Albania um, because it is you, Albania is only having a deal with Italy and they're not looking to have a deal anywhere else. As far as I'm aware, that position could change. But if you guys can prove me otherwise, then please feel free down to come to below. Now, that doesn't mean to say that we won't set up a similar deal as well. Now, for those who try to claim that obviously this is the same as Rwanda, is is also nonsense. Um, what Italy have is... They have their own officials in Albania. They get processed in Albania, and they and they get to decide whether they can come to live and work and be a part of integrated in society. Whether their process is accepted or rejected in Albania, um, 
uh, people who come and claim uh, claim uh, claim asylum there. The plan was not for, that was not the same plan we had in Rwanda. The plan was to send them to Rwanda and they would be they would remain there. Uh, if they were accepted, they would remain in Rwanda. If they were rejected, well, they would either stay in Rwanda or they get sent back to their country. They would would not be allowed to stay in the UK. That that was the pro that that was the process there. So it's a very different process of what we, we were going to have there. It comes as more than 24,000 migrants have now crossed the English Channel to the UK since the start of the year after 700 people made the crossing on Saturday. Some 11 boats were intercepted in the busiest day of the week, Home Office figures show. It brings the total number of uh, people for this year to 24,000, which is up 1% on the number of people who made it to the crossing by this time last year, but 20% down on 2022. Mr. Raymond said, we also saw Rishi Sunak counting his best friend, who is the far-right fascist leader of Italy, Giorgio Mendy. This is the same melody that warned that Italians are victims of ethnic replacement by waves of migrants who she branded criminals and rape rapists. Yeah, I don't accept her. I don't accept the other things that she said in any way, shape or form. I just don't think there's wrong, anything wrong with, with him looking at, looking at, looking at it. I really don't. I know some people will disagree, but that's fine. We got rid of the Tories, we got, we're, so things are going to change, you may all say, but last week, well, one week before, Starmer met with far-right fascist Melody, and Keir Starmer was keen to know from Melody how her far-right government dealt with migrants so well. Oh, I just told you how, I dealt, how they dealt with it. He continued after scrapping the unworkable Rwanda scheme, which is not uh, just not ethical in his view, just expensive and unworkable. He's been finding out how the Rwanda scheme may be replaced by an Albanian scheme. Again, I've just explained to you, um, as far as I'm aware, there's not going to be any kind of scheme set up with Albania. Sakir so met with Miss Melody in Rome last week as the Italian, with the Italian Prime Minister telling the press conference that the Labour leader showed great interest in the Italian government's migration deal uh, with Albania. Last year, Italy confirmed plans to open two migrant processing centres in Albania which aim to process 36,000 migrants each year. The government has argued the system is different from the Conservatives' Rwanda's deportation plan which they scrapped in July. Mr. Raymond said British politics is now loaded with anti-migrant, anti-asylum politics and his Labour phobia continuing. But the lessons don't seem to have been heard. In fact, Starmer's Labour seems to have embraced the current debate by continuing and throwing its own fuel into the bin fire by promising their own blitz on illegal immigration. He added the riots all over last summer were inevitable under his climate. Meanwhile, in a statement read out to the meeting, Ms. Abbott warned that the government promises uh, things will only get worse, presenting a grim outlook for ethnic minorities in the UK. She said, we are in a very difficult period. There is both a renewed war drive and a renewed austerity drive. We don't know if it's austerity yet, but I can understand people saying that. Whatever either of these happens, we are always accompanied by an increase in racism. Now that both are happening simultaneously, black and Asian people in this country, as well as Muslims, are bearing the brunt of this government's attacks. Labour have been contacting for comment at the time of this recording. They have not responded. And uh, I also want to stress that this time that the time of this recording as well this was on um, monday afternoon for reference as well so there will have been some things that may or may have been said in regards to this this article that may have updated since then as well mr gruskin is entitled to his views <clears throat> if he wants to say everything that's that fault is because of labor that's perfectly fine if he wants to say that <coughs> i don't accept that premise um i do accept that actions that the labor government have done some good some bad have not been helpful to us in any way shape or form certainly the winter fuel payments i think has not been in the in our interest in any way shape or form i think um you know i don't have a problem with keir Starmer looking uh, and taking potential ideas from the italian governments yes i know it's a white wing government yes you can i understand that but i don't think there's anything wrong with that um it was what's the alternative him just to set up his border command posts and and what <laughs> what what's supposed to go from forward from there like we know that they're going to be looking at clearing the backlogs anyway so i think it's far too soon to literally throw labor under a bus to say that it's their fault all these things are happening <coughs> we have to remember we had 14 years of conservatives 14 years of austerity 14 years of pain and suffering <laughs> and there's going to be a lot of pain and suffering still to come um <clears throat> and let's hope that labor does get a grip on things and let's hope that austerity does not come and if it does then yeah i will say i was wrong i've got no problem saying that i'm wrong because unlike some people uh, who hide behind their keyboards i'm willing to say when i've made a mistake but what do you guys think do you really think that labor are responsible for the summer riots do you really think labor have made everything terrible in the last three months uh if you take away the winter fuel payment the two-child benefit cap 
or do you think Labour have done some positive things but should be doing a lot more? Let me know your thoughts and more on this down in the comments section below. If you found this video interesting, please hit the like button. We would greatly appreciate it. Shares across social media so others are notified of this video. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing because it really does help support the channel. And if you want to go one step further, further support me in the work that I do here, you can do so by becoming a YouTube member for just 99p or join me on Rumble or Patreon for exclusive content on those platforms. So thank you all so much for watching and I hope to catch you all very, very soon.